Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and I would like to make this a very, very important statement. Always keep this in mind while uh, you are learning the Docker. The statement is, whatever is happening in the Docker is inside that container. The world outside the container doesn't know what's happening inside the container and also cannot interact with that container unless it is explicitly mentioned. Make sure you keep that line and just rewatch that. Always keep that in mind. Now that, that is absolutely clear that container is a very, very sacred box. Until and unless it allows us to view anything inside or move anything outside, we cannot do it. So we're gonna learn that later on, but first and foremost, I would like to introduce you to a very important command, which is IT. Now this dash IT flag in the Docker is something which you are gonna be using like crazily, almost everywhere you're gonna use that. This IT command helps us to get inside this sacred box of, you can call it container, or any other Docker container as a matter of fact. So this IT is a gateway of moving inside the container and coming back. And later on, we're gonna learn how we can expose some of the ports that act as a bridge between these containers and the outside world. But that's for some another day. So in order to understand this IT flag, we're gonna play with the MongoDB. Don't worry, I assume that you have nothing, no idea about MongoDB installation or how it works. You don't have to. I'm gonna just make sure that you understand just one command of that and that's all you have to do. Nothing at all, no installation, no worries at all. So what that command is, first we are going to learn with that and then we are gonna take down this MongoDB monster, which by the way, installation is a tricky process and we're gonna see how Docker makes everything super easy. And this will give you more idea that why everybody is getting crazy about Docker. Okay. So in my system, I was making a series on MongoDB previously for my YouTube channel. So I have this Mongo installed on my system. So if I just go and type in Mongo and hit enter, it opens up a Mongo shell on my system. It will not open up on your system. And if I run this command that says show DBs, it gives me a list of all the databases which are available in the Mongo. And Obviously, you don't have to do anything. I just wanted to show you this command that is show DBS. That's it. That's all you have to do. Within a few minutes, we are going to learn how you can also run this command. Okay, so I'm going to hit a control C to just kill that off and that's it. Okay, now it's time that we move on to the Docker hub and see what is there for us. So I'm going to go for hub.docker.com. And on that, I'm gonna search for Mongo, if the Mongo is available for me. So let's search for Mongo, and we can see there are two official images of Mongo. One is Mongo, one is Mongo-Express. We are not gonna be using Express as of now. Later on, we may give it a try. So if I click on this Mongo, uh, there's a super simple command that is docker pull Mongo. And surely we don't need to run this command. We can directly use the Docker run in Mongo so that it gets all the Mongo image for us and make sure it's up and running. Let's see how it is going on. And we're gonna learn a little bit more commands on that. So for that, I'm gonna simply say, and first and foremost, I'm gonna simply say docker ps hyphen hyphen all to see that there is nothing right now. Uh, it's absolutely purged on my system. So we're gonna simply say docker, oops, docker run mongo. Now when I run this, this is gonna take a little bit while because it is downloading the entire mongo image for me and again uh, a lot of things are gonna happen up here, don't worry about them, this is all okay. Now what is happening here that I was able to run this mongo, it pulled this image from the internet and has deployed it. Again it depends a little bit on the internet. But now as I run this mongo run and there is nothing happening. After a few seconds, you're gonna realize there is nothing happening if I hit enter. So is it that the Mongo is running here? Might be, might be the case. So let's run this command, show DBS. And you're gonna notice nothing is going to happen. If I hit enter, nothing happens. Now, what I will do is I'm gonna hit control C to kill that. And again, I'm back onto this. Very interestingly, noted down that there are some signals uh, processing thread means some signals are th being thrown up from my system to this Mongo Docker. But right now we have no idea what's happening up. So let's investigate this. So I'm gonna simply say docker ps dash dash all. So we can see 
uh, that there was something which was happening, but we have no idea what was happening. Let's investigate. So it says there was this container having this ID. I'm going to copy this ID because I'm going to need that, which name is Mongo was running and it says something like doc or entry point something. Uh, and there is a name up here. So one thing is clear from this investigation that there was a docker image which was running for a while but when I pressed Control c to kill that it was killed off. So what so the thing is if the mongo image was running up there why I was not able to interact with the mongo shell. Again the reason for that the very first statement the container is a very sacred thing we cannot directly enter into that container. So what we can do to have this, we can learn a little bit more onto this new command. First and foremost, what we're going to do is we are going to run this. So we're going to simply say, if you remember the diagram, which I showed you in the Docker lifecycle, we were having some commands, Docker start, stop, pause, and all these. So we're going to start a Docker. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this ID because this ID is the exact one which I want to run again. You can run the Docker Mongo again and get this ID, no problem. So now I'm going to say Docker start and then the ID. Specifically, just start this ID. Now what is going to happen after that if I just hit enter that it returns me back this ID that hey, this ID is running there. But right now, I cannot interact this with this. If I just start ps-all, I can see that my Docker is actually currently up from the last 10 seconds and it was created two minutes ago. So it is running, but I cannot interact with it right now. Now let's see how we can interact with. Again, make sure you have copied the ID for the Docker image that you are looking up for. Mine is already copied. So the most important command that you're going to see or will be using in the entire Docker is Docker execute and we just write exec for execute and this flag dash it is one of the most interesting flag and throughout this course you're going to see how we can take advantage of this it flag so much and then I'm going to paste the id. So this means I want to execute a certain command in the docker whose id is this but what command you want to run now interestingly you can take the entire shell from there means you can take the entire command prompt from that container out of that docker and you can just interact with it we are technically not taking it outside of the container we are just drilling a hole inside that container to reach out to that bash shell or i mean to say to that command prompt so that we can run some command so i'm going to just type bash that means just give me the bash shell from this container. I'm going to hit enter and now something happened. On my terminal which was previously saying studio at the rate Hitesh, now it's being changed to root at the rate and then exact id of the docker. Okay, something interesting is going on. If I do type my ls command now, I can see there is something different definitely. These are not my files. These are coming up from the container. Okay, interesting. Now let's go ahead and try to run Mongo here. So we're going to simply say Mongo and we're going to hit enter. And there we go. You didn't install the MongoDB on your system, but still this is exactly the prompt of MongoDB. How we can verify that by just one command that I showed you in the very start of the video. So we're going to say simply show dbs and hit enter and it's going to show you something like admin config whatever it shows if this command is executable successfully or even if you get this twiggly arrow that means you are running a mongo shell that is super fantastic remember how quickly you were able to just install and even run this mongodb that's amazing but this mongodb right now is not fully usable we need to export some kind of ports and things to take full advantage of this and I'm going to show you that in a second. So now I'm going to press Control and D. Remember this command is super important. You don't want to stuck inside this container all the time. So hit Control and D regardless if you are on a Mac or Windows Control D is the command and it says buy and then you are going to get onto the root. So I'm going to press Control D again and then you get an exit. The first one was to exit into the Mongo shell. The second one was to exit from the container. Pretty interesting so far. Now let's go back and run this command again, docker ps hyphen hyphen all. Or even at this time, if I run just the docker ps, I'm able to see that one container is continuously being running. Interesting, very, very interesting. 
Now comes up the two option, how I can stop this image because it is consuming my resources. I want to just close it down. So now I have couple of resources and couple of ways to stop this container. And we're gonna see these commands quite a lot, but I'm gonna tell you which one is the right one, which one is not so right one. So there are two commands. The one is the stop, and then you can run the ID of the Docker. Again, ID is super important. So there are two commands, Docker stop and Docker kill. Both of them are gonna stop the container, but which one should you be using? You should, most of the time, should use Docker stop. Now, whenever you are stopping anything inside your computer, any process that's running up, that is heavily dependent on to the system calls. And if you have read a little bit in during your engineering or any other ways, there are some system buses which are there in the microcontrollers which gives you or passes on these signals. Some signals are to kill, some signals are to stop the commands. The stop one is better because it allows us to all the process to complete a task and then stop it. The kill is a bad signal. It means no matter what you are doing, I just want to kill you at the exact same right moment. In very extraordinary condition, you can kill the entire things if you, the things are hanging or something like that. But most of the time, we want to use the Docker stop. We're gonna hit enter and there we go. This process is being stopped. And now if I run this Docker PS, nothing is there. Even if I run Docker PS hyphen hyphen all, there we go, uh, it has been exited now. There we go, a little bit longer video, but it was so fun to interact with the MongoDB within a few seconds. And that's the power of MongoDB. Now this IT tag, we're gonna talk a little bit more onto that, but that's gonna come up in the next video.